everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Thursday, December 1st, 2016. The winter Steam Cell dates have been leaked by NeoGAF, and we can look forward to spending our holiday money on December 22nd, the day after my winter break begins. Remember, no episodes between the 21st and the 26th. Here are two really neat looking games. The first is called Drone Swarm, a game about controlling 32,000 units at the same time. There's a link to the official site down below to sign up. And then Kingdoms and Castles, which is a medieval city and castle building game where you also have to deal with being raided by barbarians and the occasional dragon. The devs have started a fig campaign which has already been funded twice over and is my favorite of the two. Telltale Games The Walking Dead Season 3 will be able to import save files from Season 2. Nintendo is giving out the mythical Pokemon Meloetta and marks the last Pokemon given out to celebrate Pokemon's 20th anniversary. In other Pokemon news, a new tracker that allows trainers to find nearby Pokemon in Pokemon Go has rolled out to the UK. Which means it's time for release announcements, beginning with the delay of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which won't be debuting now until sometime in 2017. An additional patch is coming to No Man's Sky that will offer a few more bug fixes and optimizations. In a free update, Team 17 is calling the Liberation Update, Worms WMD will get an update next week on December 7th, which will introduce the game's first aquatic vehicle. And our final update news is for Dishonored 2, which has a new patch on Steam right now, but you have to opt into it because the patch is currently in beta. A leak has revealed Laura Croft Go could be announced this week for PS4 and PS Vita. Keep an eye on Square Enix for any announcements. Overwatch Season 3 started today. I wish I had more to say about it, but that's literally all that happened. South Korea is getting their own free-to-play Titanfall game. Hopefully it comes to other areas. A Transformers fighting game is coming to Android and iOS and should release sometime in spring of 2017. EA is going to release DLC for Battlefront that will contain content from the upcoming Star Wars movie, Rogue One. And of course they are. The only reason why that game exists is to sell copies and to ride the hype train that is the Star Wars franchise. Dangan Rampa 1 and 2 will be making its way to PS4 next year on March 14th and released this announcement. Announcement trailer. Also coming to PS4 and PS Vita 2 is Dragon Quest Heroes 2, but that has not been confirmed by Sony just yet. This comes through a leak which says it releases April 25th. And finally for teasers, I always like to save the best for last, and today is another free game. GOG is giving away Neverwinter Nights Diamond Edition to kick off their own winter sale, and you should check them out too because there are a lot of great prices on great games there. The Council Wars continue! Not really, but a game is going cross-platform competitive with PC. Find out what game, next on News Cartridge. It has been tried before and not worked out well in the past, but Gears of War 4 is going to try cross-platform competitive play between PC and Xbox One this weekend. I believe it was Shadowrun for Xbox 360 was the last game to offer cross-platform play with PC, and in the end, console players had expressed their dissatisfaction about playing against PC opponents. I support cross-platform play for most types of games, but first-person shooters are one that I agree should be segregated due to the use of controller versus keyboard and mouse. Personally, I think keyboard and mouse work better for me, but I know that's not true for everyone. I'm really interested in the outcome of this trial, and I hope it's different from the last, and both sides have an equally good time. All the while, I'm going to be riding for my PC brothers and sisters. Cross the crossplay weekend is completely optional, and you don't have to play cross-platform if you don't want to. It does, however, start tomorrow, December 2nd. Next up, Ubisoft has laid out the roadmap for Rainbow Six Siege's second year. By the way, today is Siege's first birthday, so happy birthday, Siege! It was known that eight new operatives and four new maps would be released, but now we have the regions where these operatives will be from. The first season's ops will be from Spain starting in February. By the way, all dates are subject to change. Season 2 will take place in Hong Kong starting in July. Next is Poland premiering in August. And then finally, South Korea and the one that I am most interested in. I love the high-tech gadgets and Siege, and Korea is sure to have them. Now, what's interesting and different from the first year is every season will have a mid-season reinforcement. Also mentioned are new primary and secondary weapons for ops, and of course, new cosmetic items. All in all, it should be a really exciting year for Rainbow Six Siege. Let me know which operatives you are looking forward to the most, and why, in the comment section down below.
In the quick spot today, Hearthstone players have noticed a glitch with opening packs of cards, specifically the new Mean Streets of Gadgetsand packs from the recently released expansion. There's a glitch that is causing duplicate cards to show up out of seemingly random card packs. Normally glitches aren't that bad, and on the surface this doesn't seem that bad either, but when you take into consideration these are bought with real money, it turns into a huge problem. Thankfully, Blizzard is aware of the problem and rolled out a hotfix patch for Hearthstone during the writing of this episode, so so players should now feel comfortable once again buying and opening packs of cards. Finally today, MSI is being accused of stealing a cosplayer's photo and using it as part of an advertisement. Cosplay is the act of dressing up as a character from a form of entertainment media, whether it be a TV show, movie, video game, etc. This is the image in question, with MSI's logo clearly brazening the top. Lindsay Alamode is the name of the model whose image was allegedly taken and used for commercial purposes without her permission. MSI claims they don't believe the allegations to be true, and using her image this way constitutes fair use. Regardless, the image has been removed from both MSI's Facebook and Twitter. Now personally, in my opinion, I don't believe the image to be part of fair use. The reason why I can show it to you is because I'm trying to relay news, which is clearly covered under fair use. However, using an image for an ad seems really questionable to me, but I guess that's a matter for the lawyers to decide. You guessed it, it's time for tomorrow's game releases for PC, Steep, Merlin Adventurer Store, Sparkle Unleashed, Hand Eye Cubination, Crazy Chicken Strikes Back, or Sky Time, Little Briar Rose, Minion Masters, Zulg, Construct, Crate Punks, Space Cat, Slinger, Hade, and Terminal Hacker. For Xbox One, Steep and Fury. For Nintendo 3DS, Super Mario Maker 3DS. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And what does a Jedi use to open PDF files? Adobe One Kenobi.